Hello, my name is Chris Hayde, and I'm the Director of Students and Families. That includes children's here at Desert Hills Presbyterian Church. It's all about August. Can you believe it? It's already August. So cool, not outside, but inside. We're having a lot of fun here, not only down in the clubhouse with the preschool kiddos, but up in the Studio 15 with our kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Also having a lot of fun at the Hangout, but that's for a different video. So this, um, this August, we've got a couple cool themes happening. Down in the clubhouse, it's all about the construction zone. We're going to be talking all month about God's incredible power. And I'm so excited for this um, um, series. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then up in Studio 15, it's all about digging deep. It's all about talking to our students about godly wisdom. Not just knowledge, but being able to see people see events, see that person in the mirror through God's eyes, being able to judge things with godly wisdom. And so we're so excited about that. I want to show you a couple videos um, that give you a little idea of how the month's going to go. First in the preschool, second in um, our elementary division. So check these videos out. This month's theme is Construction Zone, and it just so happens that right down the road from where I live is a very real construction site. So one day, I got to thinking, I wonder what the most powerful piece of construction equipment is. So I looked it up. Did you know a crane can hoist the equivalent of 30 blue whales in one load? That is 3,000 tons. I mean, talk about powerful. But we have someone even more impressive, more powerful to talk about this month. God. We can't wait to teach our preschoolers that God is powerful. We'll kick off the month with God's first display of awesome power when we talk about how God made everything out of nothing. Now that includes God making you and me. We want our preschoolers to know that God made them. Now this world has some pretty powerful things in it, but I've never seen anyone or anything make something from nothing. That is some mighty power. Now week two, we'll hear the story of when God used his awesome power to divide the Red Sea and make a dry path for Moses and the Israelites to walk across. Now, just in case we've heard the story so many times that we've lost some of the wonder, I'm gonna say that again. God divided a body of water for his people. Walls of water on each side of them as they walked across on dry land. Now that is powerful. Week three, we'll talk about how God's power can give us what we need even when what we need is nowhere to be found. That's what happened with Moses and the Israelites. They needed water in the worst way, but there was no water anywhere. God used his power to make water come from a rock. Water from a rock. God is so powerful. Week four, we'll hear Daniel's story and how God's power helped him make a hard but right choice. Now I'll admit it, if anyone around me is enjoying the King's Feast, it's gonna take some God-sized power to help me eat something different. Way to go, Daniel. And then last, but certainly not least, we'll end the month with Daniel's incredible story of being thrown into a den of lions for praying to the one true God. God showed that his power could protect Daniel and us when he forced those lions' mouths shut. God is so powerful. And that's what we want our preschoolers to hear over and over again this month. We want them to remember that God is more powerful than anything or any person they will ever face in this world. They can always look to God for help because God's power is awesome. Sometimes it's easy to know the wise choice. Yeah, take breakfast, for example. On one hand, you could have a fast food breakfast full of greasy goodness just waiting to clog your arteries. Or you could enjoy a bowl of yogurt, granola, and fruit. Now, as good as that fast food breakfast sandwich might taste over time, a steady diet of sausage and cheese biscuits for breakfast might lead to some health problems in the future. In this case, the healthy choice is the wise choice. But what happens when the wise choice isn't as easy to spot? 
For an adult, this might be the choice between two good job offers or which neighborhood to raise your family. For a kid, this might be deciding who to sit with at lunch, which party invitation to accept when both invitations are from good friends who just happen to schedule their parties on the exact same time, or even deciding which summer camp to attend. You weigh the pros and the cons of each choice, seek guidance from close friends, families, mentors, you even take time to pray about it. And in the end, you go with your gut, trusting that the choice you made is best. Yet, somewhere in the back of your mind, you might wonder if your gut is all that trustworthy. The choices we need to make in life aren't always cut and dry. And as our kids grow up, they'll soon learn that not every decision they'll have to make is as black and white as they would like. But that's where wisdom comes in. Giving kids a strong foundation of wisdom is important. We want them to be equipped to handle whatever choice they may face in the future. That's why we're taking the next several weeks to talk about wisdom. We define wisdom as finding out what you should do and doing it. We're hoping to help kids dig deep into the Bible and discover some of God's wisdom along the way. After all, finding wisdom isn't so difficult. All you have to do is look. And what they find will be a valuable treasure that God wants to give them. Like our memory verse for this month, James 1.5. Jesus' brother James writes this, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. And we'll start our search for wisdom with a familiar moment from Jesus' life when he was a boy. In Luke 2, we find Jesus in his father's house. He knew this was where he needed to be in order to gain wisdom and understanding we learn that Jesus grew in wisdom as well as his relationship with others and with God. Bottom line, wisdom is worth searching for. In week two, we head back to the Old Testament to discover more about one of the wisest people in the Bible, Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter three, we see how when Solomon became king, God allowed him to choose whatever he wanted to help him rule. Instead of choosing power or wealth, Solomon chose wisdom. That wisdom was soon put to the test as Solomon had to arbitrate a difficult moment between two women. God helped him make a wise ruling that solved the situation. Bottom line, trust God to give you wisdom. For week three, we head to something Solomon wrote in Proverbs 22, three. Wise people see danger. We don't want children to simply think about what's right and wrong. Rather, we want them to understand what is wise. When you tiptoe closer to that line between right and wrong, well, you end up in trouble. But instead, wisdom tells you to back away from danger and run in the opposite direction. Bottom line, think before you act. In week four, We'll continue digging deep for wisdom with something else Solomon wrote in Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. We'll see what happened with one of Solomon's sons, a young man by the name of Rehoboam, as we unpack 2 Chronicles 10. The story of Rehoboam is an interesting story because here is a young man who, once he got the advice of his elders, disregarded and ignored the advice and listened to his peers and friends. And the consequences were devastating. We simply want children to understand it's very important that they seek wisdom from the right people, the kind of people who care about them because they care about their relationship with God. Bottom line, hang out with wise people. Finally, we'll head back to the New Testament to Paul's letter to the Romans. In chapter 12, verse 2, we read, Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you and you will agree that what he wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. We want to encourage kids to continue searching for God's wisdom. 
We can always learn more about what it means to make the wise choice. And bottom line, never stop growing in wisdom. When it comes to wisdom, we want every child to grow up believing they can trust God no matter what. And because of how they trust him, they will also realize they can treat others the way they want to be treated and make wise choices regardless of their circumstances. When a kid makes their relationship with Jesus and his words a priority in his or her life, they can have the wisdom they need to live out a bigger and better story. We pray that kids will grow in their relationship with Jesus and discover why digging deep and searching for wisdom can have a huge impact on their life. Pretty cool. I'm excited about this month. We've got a lot of activities coming up this fall. We've got some bowling. We've got a picnic. Um, we've got a jingle jam coming up in December, Polar Express. Um, but the last thing I want to talk about is Parents' Night Out. That's you. Parents' Night Out, Grandparents' Night Out, Guardians' Night Out, whatever you want to call it. We want to open up our church, our clubhouse, our Studio 15 for our children and their friends. This is an outreach, which means I need your help. If you have grandchildren, if you have children in our program, please bring them to Parents Night Out. It's August 27th, Friday night, six to nine. It's absolutely free. We take the kids, you go out, watch a movie, have dinner, whatever you wanna do, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but please also tell your friends and then there's some of you that go to church, but you're not part of the children's program yet. What a great opportunity, because now you can just bring them on Friday night and we will introduce them to the children's ministry. Um, it's a lot of fun. So Parents' Night Out, it, this is a must. Please share um, the event when you get the information with all your friends, your neighbors. Let's pack this place out and let's make this a welcoming place for not only children, but for young families here at Desert Hills Presbyterian Church. I wanna thank you so much. It's been a great time. It's been a great time. Thank you for all of you that are out there um, each and every Sunday working in our children's and our student ministries. It's a blast. So until the month of September, can you believe it's almost football season? I'll see you later. Bye-bye.